Hi everyone, it's Tracy. Um, it's a little different video. I'm gonna do a little bit in the dark as I look so rough. I'm so tired. And um, I'm not gonna hashtag it or get <clears throat> try to bring new people. I'm just need to talk to y'all, you know, who follow me, support me, become very dear to me. And um, yeah, you know, it's interesting how we live in a society where bad behavior can rule the day, but if you are on the side of good behavior, you really can't necessarily speak the truth. <clears throat> the world is strange, right, y'all? So I just want to talk a little bit. <clears throat> Gosh, y'all, excuse me. My allergies, of course, like everyone's. Like one day at work, I felt like I was on an airplane on my right side of my ear. Crazy. That reminds me, my doctor got me a new allergy medicine to try. <clears throat> so I have to um, go to CVS tomorrow. But yeah, so I know it disappeared a little bit. And I know people are concerned and reaching out. And I appreciate you guys more than you'll ever, ever know. I'm so lucky. I've been so supported. And um, what a blessing, you know. And I know that's a blessing I've done for myself. You know, in some circumstances, you can't choose who you're around, right? Work, even your family, you know, uh, you can't. The grocery store, wherever, but to be judged and by who you have in your life, who you invited, who you you know have cultivated and worked on, to me is yeah, I'm very proud and thankful, truly thankful each and every one of you. Even if you don't comment or like, I can feel your love and support anyway, and I appreciate that. So I'm trying not to cry because I'm tired of crying. So basically, you know, number one, this work we're doing at work setting up yeah it's like setting up a new business really it's exhausting very strange that people who don't do manual labor or physical labor i mean don't trust me my job's physical but it's it's not excuse me seven hours physical so it's very very hard and you get punchy like we all there was it thursday we were punchy laughing just you know it's a very good group of people and we bonded in a way um when you do stuff like this bond you um but not everyone part of that experience and i can't go into detail but it's been really hard two weeks and very very painful for me and you know you do the right thing sometimes like my dad was always like sometimes the right thing is the hard thing the really hard thing you don't sometimes he said like you're gonna have to choose the easy thing you cannot do it but when it comes to other people you need to choose the right way and the hard way so having said that i'm quite capable of taking care of myself defending myself sticking up for myself when you're in a position where you have expectations placed on you what you can and can't do and there's a certain protocol and trust me i've been following protocol i have been doing every single thing i can do and i do think resolution will happen next week um i'm hopeful i think i'm beyond hopeful but um but it's been hard two weeks and i can't get that back right but on the other side there's been really good good things And again, when you're working in a group, you get that extra energy at the end that kind of pushes you to where you need to go. Because on one level, it's like, yeah, take breaks, do this, but this is a hard deadline. Like, this has to be done by this time. So, it's a very, it's a very strange two weeks. Um, but, <clears throat> and not being able to read out, really, truly reach out to y'all in the middle of it and be really honest about everything has been hard for me. And one of the reasons I haven't posted is I try to be as authentic. I just, I'm authentic and in myself. And um, I didn't feel like I could do that. So, um, and I, I actually reached out to people in my life that was super supportive. They didn't have to share on a video. It could be held against me. And I get the big picture and I get help. you know, businesses are run and all that, but it's um so the, the the best part of it is forming a team and you know we really truly um and kind of 
two new people because uh, other people coming back had worked at, with us before. So anyway, and the person who I'm going to do direct work with, um, you know, and I work on circulation. What we do is we support the library, the information staff, right? And customers, of course. So the person I would support, um, she's new. She's amazing human being and a fabulous worker, very inspiring and open to ideas. And I just knew we were going to have an amazing working relationship. And that, you know, I, it's what I'm kind of used to, but I think this one's going to be very, very special. So that is a blessing, you guys. And that's going to continue. That's not changing. So yeah, but I was just thinking about how important this format is to me and reaching out to y'all and <clears throat> to feel like I could not do it was really added to my pain. <laughs> but I thought, you know, and I, I haven't been answering um, comments. You know, I don't, you can't really see it, but I have swollen wrists and my hands. And as, as hard as I, I mean, I work very hard to keep my hands. I mean, the amount of arthritis from my job is unbelievable, but <clears throat> it's my choice to keep doing my job. So I do my best to protect my hands and protect my neck, protect my back, that kind of thing. So I went to acupuncture and it was so good. And <clears throat> this weekend, I'm going to really, it's tough. There's stuff I want to do. I want to do art. I want to sew. Um, you know, but I do need to sort things. And I love sorting my stuff, y'all. I really do. But then, like I said, I hit a window. I'm like, I don't feel like doing it anymore. So that kind of thing. I'm going to watch some DVDs. I'm going to do some yoga. Uh, so I'm going to really take it easy. Um, I'm going to try to respond to comments like throughout the weekend, just cause I, it's hard. I need my fingers, you know, even holding my phone, holding this cup of coffee. I have to support it because my hands are weak and you know, <clears throat> I'm going to do acupuncture once a week. If I have to go twice a week, I'll go twice a week. Um, and this will change, but then my job still, we're going to be insanely busy. And, you know, so anyway, my hands are my number one and my heart and my psyche, but I'm here. And, um, you know, one day, <clears throat> some distance, maybe I'll tell the story. But for now, I really would be frowned upon. And, uh, but I do think next week will be a better, better I've been told it will be a better week. So, see? <sighs> Yeah, I was telling you, in the midst of all this craziness and coming home, number one, you're just physically tired. I could, and but when I'm emotionally upset, <clears throat> you know, I've lost seven pounds in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, they went to seven pounds in two weeks. Now I was really fighting hard not to use sugar to cope with this situation or carbs to cope with the situation. Um, and overall, I did pretty damn well. I, I will say there's been a few sprites here and there. And, um, you know, I got, I don't feel compulsive right now. So I did have some, um, got me some mochi. And, you know, I still have, I mean, this was last week and I still have like two left and I shared. And I had gotten some good Trader Joe's stuff. And we have a convection of it. So I could, I made those little pastry bite things, you know, with the the feta and the caramelized onions. Shared them with everyone. They loved them. So, but that's how stressful it's been, <laughs> y'all. Seven pounds. Always happy to have seven pounds off my body, but not like this. So, yeah. So that's one of the things I'm going to do this week and think about food planning. Um, I'm going to get a couple more things from Trader Joe's. It's just so convenient when I like literally can't think of anything, but I would like to make a casserole or have stuff for a second casserole. And, um, yeah, I gotta think about that. Maybe we'll talk about that later because I want to get up tomorrow. There's things I want for our kitchen. Like, you know, there's little dust pans, scrubbers. I need a shelf for my locker, just little stuff like that. I'm going to get from the Dollar Tree. I think... If they have it, sometimes, well, they'll have most of it. <clears throat> sometimes they don't have the little things, little pan or um, a shelf locker. You know, they, so I, I'll just look. If not, I'll run into Walmart. But I thought, well, if you're going to run into Walmart, blah, 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 blah. if you're going to run into Walmart, let's, have, get, let's get our list because it really is a lot of things cheaper. 
So I would like to have some kind of chicken with stuffing, Thanksgiving in a casserole. Um, I want to get, I've been, you know what the biggest thing I've been doing is choosing fruit for my snack and those little things and nuts that come from Trader Joe's. So, um, it's so funny. I'm in the grocery store and I'm trying like, okay, <sighs> these raspberries are like $5.99. Really? Wouldn't hesitate to go get ice cream at $5.99 or $8.99, but I'm like, Tracy, get these. I ate them. They were so good. I thought, Tracy, if you just buy yourself raspberries every day, if that's what you need, it <clears throat> felt like a treat. It felt yummy. It has a lot to do with my grandmother. I had a raspberry bush. And I, raspberries are absolutely intertwined with my, my, my grandma. So, yeah. I mean, I'm happy. But so, and you know, I'm doing like 12,000 steps or more day. Oh, my God. One day I was so upset my Fitbit wasn't charged up. I'm like, okay. So, yeah. and But, you know, I've had the most amazing support. I have. And, um, I don't know, I just, at some point, just, just felt like something crack. And, um, you know, this, like, love and compassion filled my heart. And <clears throat> it's, a, it's just been because of the physical exhaustion. Um, it's been a wild ride, y'all. It has. And I keep thinking, wow. You want to call it God, the universe? I mean, I believe in God. I believe, I'm not sure I believe in God a lot of people believe in. I'm not sure. I don't believe in any of the dogma that goes along with it. But I do believe in, uh, I know I'm supported. I know I'm loved. I know I'm guided. And if that's the, you know, people think it's universal energy. I, I, it, to me, it doesn't matter what you call it. And whether you're Jewish or Muslim or Hindi, <clears throat> and you, you have different names for things, is the same principle. And I really had a, I had a, like a breakthrough in the car talking to my friend Beverly and, um, yeah, but sometimes you're challenged. <laughs> like, oh yeah, you, you, yeah, you got that. Well, come on. I was prepared for stuff and then I wasn't prepared for somebody else to be so upset. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but <clears throat> thank God for my sense of humor, y'all really. I get that from my father. And I think because my brother and my mother are hard to make laugh for whatever reason. They're very Norwegian. That's all I'm gonna tell you. If you're Norwegian, you know what I'm talking about. But <clears throat> um, the joke is, did you hear the one about the Norwegian farmer? He almost told his wife he loved her. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I remember telling my brother and my mom that joke and they're like, huh? It's not funny. Which made me hysterical, but yeah, we're all so different. You know, <clears throat> so many people who are in pain and damage need the most compassion, you know, that you can muster. And I would hate for God to say to me, you know, I gave you so much more than that person. Why did you not rise to the occasion? Really? And, um, but at the same time, you're like, Okay, well, you know, guess what? Still in my human body, still got all my issues. But, you know, um, and one of the things I wanted to share is um, Pema Schroden, P-E-M-A. Her last name is Schroden, C-H-O-D-R-O-N. It's a Buddhist name. And um, I can't tell you exactly because it's on my phone. But her books are When Things Fall Apart. I think it's her first really, the book that made her well-known to people. <clears throat> it's a wonderful book. Actually, I should probably reread it. But I pulled out on, um, there, again, y'all, get your cards. Get your library cards. Who's watching me that doesn't have a library card? Raise your hand. Okay. That's okay. Get your library card, y'all. Just It's free. And if y'all have a terrible library system, and God bless you, Brooklyn, um, Brooklyn uh, Library will will let you have digital cards for free because they're committed to anybody who lives in a place where books are banned, which y'all, that's another discussion. You can have access to whatever you want. So if you don't have a good library system, join the public, go to Brooklyn and get, um, I don't know exactly if you put Brooklyn Public Library, probably I do that. But anyway, Hoopla is one of the apps in Libby, but Hoopla has all these Pema workshops. So it's not her books being read, but it's her workshops. And 
she talks and she's got such a phenomenal sense of humor and the calmness this woman has. And she's listening to people talk about deep pain. I mean, really, it will, it will break your heart or you'll totally relate to it or parts of it. And she has empathy, but she does not take on their pain. Right? She doesn't take it on because she has an understanding of suffering in this world <clears throat> that in the Buddhist culture, um, you know, that's sort of what it is about. I don't know if it's what you would call it, just transforming suffering. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a Buddhist in the sense I've never studied. I, I, you know, I just take what I need to help me get through, but it was something about, um, Difficult changes or dealing with difficult emotions, something like that. But anything you take by her, you're going to love. So I had that in my ear. Now, we're all kind of helping each other. So there were times when, you know, I'm engaged with people and, I, you know. But there's times when I would be alone doing something and I would have Pema right here in my ear. And she's helped me so much. She's helped me so much. And then talking to other people about Pema and, um, you know, that's, you know, I'd like to share Pema if I can. So y'all check her out. And even if right now you feel stable or whatever, it's just, um, and she always talks about, let's say there's a situation where someone is, um, unpleasant to you. Let's just say that. Yeah, it's not about you. <clears throat> well, let's say someone cuts you off in traffic. That's not about you. Personally, that's about this person and their energy. But it triggers in you things that you've dealt with in the past that were about you. So you're having this moment of pain coming up and then you react in a certain way. And of course, you kind of don't want to react. You want to process or be the witness or be present and observe. And um, you know what? I did a pretty good job, but let me tell you something. I really got thrown off when somebody else was really upset. And, you know, Beverly and I have talked about that. You know, I think because... I didn't feel protected as a child or my teens, you know, um, I felt like I was a protector, but, but I think because I didn't feel protected that I'm very protective of other people. Like I, I can literally not tolerate it. Um, so I'm trying to work on that because, okay, I gotta help. um, that is a burden too much for me. Not that you would not help people or not. But to uh, to really take on their burden and their pain um, and it affects you is not the point. It's not the point, y'all. And you know, my friend's like, could you think a little bit about self-preservation? And of course, at first I'm like, that, you know, but it's not about, it's not about selfishness. Um, I'm going to call this deep thoughts at the Mermaid Cove. <laughs> But it's not, you know, I'm just learning, y'all. I'm 58. I'm starting to grow up. It's the, it's the God's truth. I'm trying to figure out and to go from like, okay, well, if I put myself first, I'm selfish. Or if I don't help someone, I'm selfish. Or I'm weak. Or I'm a terrible person. So, you know, it's just all this stuff. But I do know that being empathetic and actually, I don't know how to say it other than I have an intuition. I call it my spidey sense. We all have it. But I can, get, I can know people like that. And I, you know, I can get a feel like that, like within seconds. And actually even sometimes like I get a feeling before it ha I meet someone or before something happens. And, um, like you guys, like I right now filming this, not posted, nobody has read this. Nobody has, I mean, sorry, watch this. I feel your love and support from this video now. This is. Such a gift. Such a gift. I honor that. You guys, I honor it. You have no idea how much I honor y'all. So, that's I'm going to be a jumble here. It's okay. It's going to be long because then maybe people won't click on it. People I don't know won't click on it. I don't know. Get your daily dose of Tracy, your hour dose. But, and I really miss this two weeks not sharing as it goes in the moment, but I was not emotionally in the spot I am right now to do it. And, um, but yeah, so I mean, sometimes you just think, wow, what's happening? Why is this? And I still don't know what I, you know, this being going, come here, Claire. Everyone wants to see you. Let me stop right now and tell you about the situation with Claire that flipped me out Thursday. Come on, baby girl. Come on. Come on.
Everyone wants to say hi to you. She's, okay, now if I don't look, she'll come up. But if I keep doing it, she won't. So it was today, y'all. Saturday. So Thursday night, I come home. Pretty hard day. The day before had been a really tremendously, ridiculously hard day. Yesterday, that was a hard Thursday. Was a hard day because helping someone else cope. And then um, I came home. My cleaners had come that day. It was very excited. And I walked into the worst smell. And at first I thought, you know, my other cat had diabetes and he peed everywhere. And I've had my carpets cleaned four times. I have to tap my carpet. I have to have everything and get hardwood floors. But y'all, right? When's that happening? Not, I mean, that will happen. I'm going to change that language. It's going to happen. Um, but just not today. And I thought, did Clara? She, I'm like, terrified she's getting diabetes. And... So I'm running around and I'm like, this can't be. There's no matter what. Clara could have put it all day. It wouldn't smell like this. I go in the kitchen. I'm so calling. I called my friend Bev. Bev's my best friend. I'm like, Bev, there's a smell and da da da. And I look over because I and we're like, okay, open the windows. I opened all the windows. I was worried to death about Clara. I didn't know what was happening. So I decided like I needed some protein. So I was gonna make hamburger and the the turn, you know, how do you know when you have gas stove, gas oven and stove and is that off? And then there's Ignite, right? It was like that. And it was gas had been leaking. I'm telling y'all, I must drop dead. I was so worried about Clara. So I texted my cleaner. I'm like, oh my God. You know, when did you, when were you guys here? Like, what was the time? And and I, I want to I wanna say it happened at 3, between 3 and 3.30. I get home at 7. Thank God it wasn't a late night. So I grabbed Clara. Because now... I, I mean, I grab Clara and I go put her in my car, which is traumatizing for Clara and me. I have every single window open. I have fans going. I'm calling the um, emergency line for gas people. You know, my carbon monoxide thing was not going off. From what I could tell, I'm going to have Kenny double check it for me, but it looked like the lights were on. It didn't look like it sh sh would not go. Come here, Swiss. Come on, come on, talking about you. Everyone's going to be worried about you, sister. So, um, let me see if I can get her. Clara. Clara. Hi. Yes, my girlfriend. So I talked to this woman, 12 year old, sounded like to me, answering the phone at the gas emergency line, Googling, called an emergency vet. I mean, just it was a minute. Called Beverly, had Beverly going. My I had everyone, all my friends, like, oh my God, oh my God. So then everyone's like, it's probably fine. So I said, mm, probably fine. When it comes to Claire Johnson, no. So I um Got in my car. It's dark. My light won't come on and stay on. We're sitting in the car. I feel like the mice are going to come get us any second. And Claire knew something was wrong. And she was like right on me. Um, and cried for three hours. <laughs> I just, it was too much. Too much. Now, I'm thankful my house didn't burn up. I'm thankful if I had come in, Claire Johnson was gone. Y'all, really, it terrifies me right now. I'm not, we're not going to think about because Claire's here, right? Bugging me for food, being Claire. And she was, she, when the cleaners come, she gets, she gets anxious anyway. It's basically the same people, but she's very nervous Nelly. I got to check your feel way. Maybe your feel way's off too. But she's, you know, she's looking at the stairs and, you know. So... Good news, Claire's fine. I came in. We slept in a freezing cold house because I still could not think of it not all being out. I woke up every hour to make sure Claire was breathing so I annoyed the crap out of her. I'm like, are you okay? Y'all remember in Terms of Endearment in the beginning when Deborah Winger's character was born and Crazy Sally, you know, what, I can't remember the character, but she's waking her up every hour to make sure she's breathing and this poor baby's not getting any sleep. I my I had my moment from terms of endearment, but you know I was already having a hard week and emotionally upset, and then you have this, y'all. Wow, so I'm so thankful. But Friday morning, I I had actually let my supervisor know that this is all this is going on. So I'm gonna come in at eleven. If we all if we wake up in the morning, I get the, I feel comfortable with leaving Claire. I'll be there at eleven. And I was leaving early to go to acupuncture, but yeah, I don't mess around with my Claire Johnson, y'all. So, but I look like a side of meat. Like, you know, when you cry and cry and it was, it was really good probably because I, I have been trying not to cry too much, but it all came out. And that is always a good thing for me. 
really, I should have done a video in the car. You guys would have been on planes trying to come get me. Yes, Claire, these are lovely people and they like seeing you. Why are you such a nussy? See, she knew I was going to try to get her. <clears throat> God's going to get her. But, um, so that, yeah, that was, yeah. So yesterday was, uh, I was exhausted. And then I realized I did not have, I had not taken my Adderall, y'all, which is another story. I hadn't taken my medicine. But, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? And everyone does this. Everyone has crazy stuff going on all the time. So we have new stuff everywhere, right? And um, really we're trying to make it perfect. So when the executive, and for me it's the customers, and the patrons, I like that word better than customer. When the patrons come in, I want, you know, you want it as perfect as you can humanly get. So anyway, we have this low counter and you would see it right when you walk in. Well, one of the things we do when, okay, so the cycle, we all want to learn some library stuff. So, okay, you buy a book, it gets damaged. Uh, nobody wants it. All kinds of things because you have a it's just like your house right you have so much space if you keep buying mugs you're gonna have to let mugs go okay and you have your favorites you're using all the time but there's mugs that yeah you know you really don't want so anyway that's kind of the process of the book every book that comes in the library every material every item will be weeded now different libraries do different things we have a friends right so what what happens is they have bookstores and whatever they do. I don't know. But they do have bookstores. Some of the libraries, um, we used to have a really big book sale. And that's a whole other story for another day. Um, but um, so all this money, and it's a lot of money, y'all. And this is also books that people donate, you know. Like when you give a book to a li books to the library you don't want anymore. So all that money goes into a pot. And really, they focus on programming, especially early early literacy. You know, and in the summer, we most libraries have performers come. You know, and they get five hundred to thousand dollars. You know, so all that money really truly goes towards. Um, sometimes it's staff training, that kind of thing, special training, but it really goes towards programming for the public, which is wonderful. So, but so here's a book, and what we have to do is I don't. I don't have a book near me, y'all. I'm going to do some reading today, I think. And you have to just mark a couple things out. And we have a stamp that says withdrawn from, you know. And then, um, yeah. So this involves a permanent magic marker. Black. Okay. Things happen to me. Like, somebody was not happy with me because I kept going back in the back room and having a minute to drink my protein shake. You guys... Chances are I will be the first person to spill on the new carpet. That's chances are. Not going to be before the customer, the public comes. It's not going to be before the the higher ups, okay? This bill, it will not be. So I kind of, or like wanted, like sometimes I had, need a little hit of caffeine, had a little Dr. Pepper. I wasn't going to dare bring it with me where I was. So I kept kind of going back because I needed some protein. Long Anyway. So I'm thinking, I go and get um, the head of our cleaning crew. Um, he's a really good friend of mine. And I'm like... Okay, you know, when you're getting in repetitive motion, you can't be perfect. Well, I, I can't anyway. Things just happen to me, you guys. So we went and we found a big piece of cardboard she cut for me, which now someone has, has disappeared. And I had everything. So I knew I'd be okay, right? And I have no idea where this story, oh, we, story's going. But anyway, um, so now the next part we're doing. So everything we did was... Um, Everything that was in the library at the time we closed was packed away uh, by a moving company and we oversaw it. So it went in boxes in the right order. So it came out. So it's, it's a time consuming thing. But we're pretty quick and really I knew we'd finish on time because we just were. And, the, and what I have to tell you this is so these they are considered employees in the sense that they're contract workers and, you know, the same standards apply for them that would apply to me. And there were a lot of people, a lot mostly from um, South America, different countries, and, but you know, most. And they were, I would say, from their mid twenties up. Lovely, lovely group of people. My first day, I was working with this kid. He's probably twenty five, and then so basically, what you do is you have someone opening the boxes, and they're lab they're in order, and then um, he would be helping me. We'd figure out like which way the box they need to go on. 
And then um, we, we he should have been putting it on the shelf, but I was doing a little shelf reading, so I was doing a little bit. And really, I, I couldn't pull things out, but when someone handed me books, I could go like this and put them down, so I'm not, you know, flexing my hands. But he was so proud of himself, and he said, this is right, right? You know, and they, they were like that. They were respectful. They were just, had good energy, um, and they were so proud and wanted to learn. They really wanted to do it right on their, you know, so it was just a great experience, you guys. It really was. Made it go so much faster. And it was just nice to be around, you know, this group of people that were, um, yeah. And there was one lady, I, I, she wasn't there my first day, but she was there the second day. I'm a hugger. I'm like, because she was one of the team that helped me pack. And they were so good. I knew she'd be good. So I tried to grab her whenever I had to do something. <laughs> I would steal her from people. She's just lovely. So we, um, yeah, that, I have no idea what I'm talking about, y'all, where I was. But anyway, that's sort of the history of a book. And, um, but that's where we are now. So our next, okay. So our next part now is, and I, they say we have extra shelving. Okay, but it's it's just not, I don't know. It feels like less shelving because we have the same amount of books going back and we had gotten rid of a lot before. But you, so, and one of the things you do in a library is you pull a report. So let's say you want to see from, and of course, the pandemic threw a lot of this off. So let's say from June 2020 to June um, 2022, what books did not circulate, right? A lot of times they're missing. They're not there. Um, so we call it like, you know, the dead list. So you see if they're there. If they are, you take them. That's basically one of the tools we use to weed. You absolutely weed by condition. I, you know, I... Some books I don't mind being old, but mm, you want to get in bed and read your book and it's yucky. I don't know. And I don't want to touch them. And the other thing is, let's say, you know, the new Daniel Steele has calmed down and we do a thing where we rent books and we send them back. But let's say we end up with five on our, sh five copies on our shelf. We, we don't have room for that. And, you know, so we'll keep two or it just depends on the, how much space you have, how popular it's been, that kind of thing. So that's another way we weed. But anyway, so we've been spending time weeding because now we're having these things returned that have been, so any books that were checked out when we closed, people eventually returned, right? So they gone, they've been in a warehouse. So I can't describe to you. We unpack like 1,500 boxes. There's going to be more than that. So somehow... And you can't do it all because a third of your, so usually at least a third or more of your collection is circulating. So right now, none of our books are circulating, right? Everything's been returned or is in the process of coming back to our shelves, but you can't. And you can't have a shelf so packed. You can't, you know, it's like when you go thrifting and there's shirts, like a circuit is so tight, you can't even move space. People don't want that. You can't look at that. So the less you have on a shelf, the better it looks, right? And the better it is experience for a patron. So, y'all, we have, can't describe to you. So, it's work. So that's our next phase next week. And really, they'll bring in people to help. We, I mean, we should have had more help than we had, I think, this week, last two weeks. But we will have people from our collection department to come help us. Because um, it's just too much for one small staff. And we're like, I think... This week we were 40, um, I think we're 40, 50, I think we're down 80 hours just in general. And then somebody um, has gone back to their home country for a month. So I think we were 100 hours staff down. It was a lot. But you know, you rise to the occasion and, um, and, you, go, and you go to get laser and massage and needles. <laughs> Smart. But that's kind of what's been going on. And then, you know, we set up our back room and the kitchen, our desks, uh, where our supplies go, that kind of thing. You know, they wanted us to get rid of some more stuff. And, you know, we have money. You know, we're going to get new toys and new stuff. And I, I'm going to take a picture, y'all, and put it on my Instagram or maybe on here one day. We have this beautiful mural in the children's section. It's wonderful. Just happy. And I'm, I am really excited. Um, and I think now I can actually be excited and not have, you know, not try, yeah, you know, y'all know what I'm saying, so that's what's going on there, so it's going to be a tough week, and then books have to be shelved, y'all, and there's certain areas I can't shelve, I'm not a shelver, and I'm going to do my best to help, but I really next week have to pace myself more, 
there's going to be more people and I'm going to become one of the medium slow people because I just, my hands are just, it is just crazy. I mean, the swelling and I just can't have that because it, my, I've lost two weeks of my life. Like I could, I, yeah. So now I get to slowly think about what do I want to do today? And I do have some videos, um, DVDs I'd like to watch. And, um, you know, always YouTube. <coughs> so I've been, what? <coughs> so instead of watching hauls, there's certain people I like to spend time with and that's what they do. Like Jody's Craft Room, Crafty Girl, um, Tiffany, Thrifty Tiffany. You know, there's just certain people I really like. There's one woman, Brown Eyed Girl on a Budget, I think. I haven't seen her lately. I like her. I'm going to look her up. And there's a woman, I think she's Canadian. I can't think of her name, Gail something, but she talks. She's the best voice. She's the best voice. And then Jennifer Moens, eh, I'm not sure, but she shows what's at the stores. But I don't necessarily need all that. So I'm just sticking to people I really like to be around, like to spend time with. So that also is like, okay. So I was really in a, y'all, I, I, it's going to take me a while to get through all the Dollar Tree stuff I got. I'm very much obsessive about it and compulsive. And I'm not right now. I'm not. Partly because I'm shifting that. Like, if you're compulsive about eating pizza, why are you going to have pizza in your house, right? Why are you going to watch pizza ads? Why are you going to, you know? So, but I do, like I said, I had a major shift this week. And maybe everything was conspiring to get me there. I don't know. I really don't know. But I am appreciative of that. And, you know, again, it's not necessarily what happens to you. It's how you handle it. And, um, you know, it's just being back without Angela. It was just a perfect storm of emotion. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to share a bunch of my stuff I got from the Dollar Tree with y'all. And um, I want to do, I, you know, I started this 100-day project where you do one, do whatever you want for 100 days in a row. Well, I got sidetracked, dude. I mean, really, I couldn't, even if the emotional stuff hadn't been going on, I was just dead tired. So I want to work on that. I want to get up. I know I have to find out if it's day, what day it is. Like, it might be 30 day. I'm not sure. But I want to, I want to get caught up with that. And enjoy doing that process and posting and sharing. I want to get back to some of my Instagram. I mean, I haven't hardly been on Instagram, like even looking at it. Because, you know, your phone, you have to push and do that. I mean, I can put on a YouTube video and not. I know. So Mel Robbins, have y'all heard of her? She's written books, but she, I really like her. I like her style. There's some other people I've watched. I just don't like the presentation. I don't, well, you know, you'll, you connect with people you don't. Anyway, I like her and um, it's amazing. Y'all check her out. And it's really about self-esteem and, you know, uh, how do you get up in the morning when you want to and but you don't and how do you help yourself do things you'd like to do? So I've been having her on more than listening to people shop. Go figure, it's made a difference. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I would recommend her too. I wanted to see if there's... Pema stuff on in on um YouTube. Also Louise Hay, H A Y. I love Louise Hay, y'all. If you have not met Louise Hay, look her up. Um, she's an amazing woman. She's gone now, but yeah. So that's the kind of stuff I've been doing. But like I said, I have all kinds of ideas, and I would love to. I really still want to go. I got to get back with Mark and Sue. I got to call them and make a date and um. I've got a lot of people I need to touch base with and I want to see. So, but I'm going to be very, the next couple weeks, I'm going to be very conservative with my time. And my poor friend, Nito, y'all who met, <clears throat> we were supposed to, it's like our, I don't know, our second or third Friday night that um, I was going to have acupuncture and he's not far from there and we're going to go have dinner. And I call him, I'm just like, I can't. Well, I had last night, I had to come home and check on Clara. Yeah. My girl needed checking on, so, and I was so emotionally tired by this point. My hands hurt. It was like, <coughs> you go home and shower. Um, but yeah, so now let's talk some fun stuff. So I really would like to go to the um, Asian grocery store with y'all and try things. Mark and Sue. I still want to do gas station hauls. My books. Um, decluttering, letting stuff go, organizing. Um, I do have one area of stuff that I'm going to try to figure out if I have 25, film that, because I would like to go tomorrow and drop stuff off at um, the food bank. Say hi to my friend, my cat friend. Tux, I think they call him Tux. I made up my own name for him. His name is George in my <laughs> Tux. I like real names for animals, but 
Um, yeah, and really start to go through stuff, put stuff away, make some decisions, share what I got. I need to hunt my nephew down and his girlfriend and make a date. Because, you know, these young people, they're just so busy. And, you know, if I don't say, pick a day and come, then I actually would like to get in my garage a little bit and have him help me put some stuff back. So just, you know, and have some lunch, do something, just see him. He's, I just love this kid. He's just so sweet. And, um, you know, so he had his, um, my, I had my brother for his birthday. I gave him, I don't know. It was a good one. It was a really expensive one. Something my friend, one of my friends that does everything, like researches it and goes for the best done. And, um, so my nephew had done like 23 and me. So it was really different kind of report, but they, my, they came up with this, um, county in Sweden. Now, I mean, we found out when we did my brother that my mom was not 100% sweet Norwegian, but it could have been ancestors went hundreds of years before from Sweden there. So, you know, the whole Scandinavian thing. But my dad's dad, this big hunk guy, I have to find, I don't have many pictures. My cousin, I need to talk to my cousin too. I need to hook up with her and I want some more pictures. But my, um, the pictures of my grandfather, because my dad, he died when my dad was young. What a gorgeous hunk of a Swedish man. So it came up with a county that he probably was born in. And then my, I would like to learn more too about my, my grandma was gone. Um, my brother knew my grandmother on my dad's side, but we called her Grandma Anderson. But um, I, she was gone way before I was born. Um, so I really knew my mom's parents. But she, we're not sure, like Polish. I thought, according to the other one my brother did, we had, uh, you know, you it was pretty much like Ukrainian stuff. And I always, Ukrainian people always ask me if I'm Ukrainian. So, I don't know. I think I am. So, yeah. I got books I want to spend time with. I need to return. You get notices when your books are overdue. Normally, you know, I look at my card. I have not had time. I remember somebody said, well, did you see my email? Like, one of my supervisors said, when... When do I have time to look at email? I'm a manual labor right now, and I am not on computer, but that's changing this week. I'm I'm really going to watch it. And it will be a more supportive environment where I can do that. So that's lovely. Yeah. Um, I'm not, you know, things aren't completely settled yet, but I'm cautiously optimistic, but also now I'm going to be able to handle it differently. So don't test me guys so but I do want to think about food I want to like I said I gotta see I have chicken I don't need to buy any chicken I have sausage <laughs> still so I really gotta focus on eating down my freezer really truly eat my and get back on the roommate thing I don't even want to go into it right now but yeah um what else is going on so what's your favorite casserole to make like your go-to like every your kids or your friends like make that casserole what's that we have this really good one. It's uh, one of my friend Nancy introduced. It's like hot chicken salad or something. And I think I have to look at it. Y'all, I might need mayonnaise. I have to check on my mayonnaise stock. And I got away from cook's list thing where I keep track of everything. I want to get back on that. I really do like that. Um, and you guys, the way prices are now, Walmart always used to be the best deal. Now, like the great value, like canned beans, like string beans are probably really the best deal. But like Campbell's soup, stuff like that. Dollar Tree's hard to beat y'all for $1.25 right now. And they have like organic stuff. So, <clears throat> you know, but right now I'm not buying anything to build up. I just want to see, you know, I might make that hot chicken salad thing because that's really good. Like I said, I want to do some of a like Thanksgiving casserole thing. So I'll probably focus on those two. I have some turkey slices, you know, the thick ones from Trader Joe's that um, I froze. I want to eat those. I did buy myself some of that. It's like chicken apoyo or apoyo is chicken, right? Um, adobe chicken. So yesterday I had cut that up and put it on um, a tortilla with some vegetables. Now my tortillas are gone. So I need to put that on my list that I need tortillas. So yes, yeah, so I think I'm, my plan right now is to get up in the morning when I feel like it. But I want to go to Walmart. I think I'll go to Dollar Tree first to see if they have like the... Um, this thing for my locker, stuff like that, and then check out Walmart and um, go to the food bank. And um, yeah, yeah. And then come home and I want to have my table set up. My table's really not that bad. I haven't even had time to make a mess. I haven't. 
So, um, so I'd like to sew and do, you know, really work on that project. So yeah, and um, you know, it's gonna depend on my hands. They're number one priority. And um, a little tile and all seems to help. I actually came home one night. You know this, these dish pans I'm obsessed with from Dollar Tree? <clears throat> so I have one. And y'all, I am so smart sometimes. I boiled water, y'all. There's a big thing of water on the sink. And then I put um, Epsom salts in it and put it in a dish pan and just sat with my hands in Epsom salt. Y'all, excuse me why I ungraciously shift. Yeah, so I, um, I, so that's helpful and I want to keep doing that. Um, but yeah, you do what you can. I have salon pasta. I actually have that on my desk for anyone who really needed it. You know, uh, even the young people needed some salon pasta. I did pretty good with my drinking and my protein shake and my water. Today, I really want to keep on with that because today, like today's like today is when a day I can lose it. So I'm going to actually, when I'm done with y'all, I'm going to have some lunch or, you know, it's only eight o'clock. Some breakfast, I'm out of eggs, y'all. I'm out, not one egg in the house. Um, I was thinking about what I'm going to have for breakfast. And maybe I'll just have some of my Adobe um, chicken. And, you know, so do that kind of thing. Um, think about what I'm going to eat, get a food plan. Get my water and my protein shake all set up for day so I know that, yes, this is what I need to drink. Um, so I have a couple of yoga tapes from the library, and um, they're from our branch, so I just kept it because, yeah, you know, it was just going to sit in a tub that we're not going to check in. So, um, <clears throat> And there's this one, I'm, I, I like it, I'm going to show you about aging gracefully, something like that. So, yeah, I think I'm going to really, really have a combination of maybe watch a DVD or do something like that. And then I'm going to, um, you know, go through something, put it away, fill myself out. Um, I'm going to keep posting my fabric and, you know, I did, I was like, you're not going to look at this start on your fabric until you really get all the other uh, project of going through all those clothes put away. But I do want to consolidate my fabric. And my friend's daughter, who, just say prayers for her, y'all. Her name's Cleo. Just surround her in light and love. She needs it. She's 16, and she's struggling. She's one of the most interesting human beings I've ever met. Smart. She's a master gardener. She understands every insect on the planet. She is, like, a master sewer. Like, she went to, I can't, I don't know if I said this or not. I get confused. But if you ever go to Mount Vernon, where George Washington lived, they are the snootiest tour guides. They are, I can't describe to you how impressed they are with themselves, y'all. And my mom and I, I feel like I told you this, this, but I know y'all love me and forgive me. Um, but when my mom was a tour guide, we got to go, they would share like private tours. So we got to go to the White House because they had the, you know, and White House is done by a secret service. So they had had tours. So we went to Mount Vernon and y'all, but anyway, my friend, Miss Cleo, was at Mount Vernon and impressed the hell out of these women. So that is what I'm going to tell you. If you can impress the Mount Vernon people, she's just amazing. Like she, I can't, this kid. And she's suffering. She's, she hasn't found her tribe. I, she, I believe she'll grow into herself, but she feels, you know, she's 16, so empathetic and feels pain so deeply for other people. So she's struggling. It's hard to find your place in this world and find to find a sense of peace within yourself. I mean, I'm 58 and I'm definitely getting there, but I'm not there, right? So um, just around her in light and love and um, hugs and she's just, she needs it. And I just adore her. But I think what I'm going to do is my other sewing machine that does, wasn't working, I'm going to bring, I mean, when she's, you know, feeling better, calmer, you know, just not feeling overwhelmed. I'm sure it's something simple that she can fix. So, and I, what I want to do is start going through my fabric. And I'm going to try to be really ruthless because, you know, I'm not going to quilt like I thought I would. <clears throat> but I do want it for all my stuff. And I got all this new fabric from Amy Jo that honestly will leave me for the rest of my life. So I'm going to go through stuff and I'm going to save it for her and then let her decide if she wants it or not. And then, you know, she probably would know of some organization that would need it, you know, to give people fabric. So, but that will just, you know, it's going to be on her time, not my time. But so I thought, yeah, 
I think you've earned the right just to sit here and go through fabric. Of course, y'all bringing you with me. Of course I am. What's the point of that if you're not here? So, riveting television. <laughs> riveting. I remember Angela saying to me, why does someone want to watch you talk about your groceries? I said, because I don't know. I like to watch people talk about their groceries. But yes, I'm going to try to get a little bit more kind of groove going on in a plan that I can deviate from, but start with a plan. And, um, you know, Clara's going to have, other than leaving tomorrow for a couple hours, I'm going to be with my Clara all day and try to, you know, I, I have to look and see if I have frozen fruit because I really want some fruit today. I, I should see what I have. I might run out real quick to my local store and just get some fruit. Um, see what's on sale. I have strawberries, so that'll probably be good enough for today. But yeah, so that's it. I still have Tamu stuff coming up. Now, they reached out to me. And this woman's really nice, but you have to do all this stuff. And, you know, I, she sent me a look of stuff I could order, and I just nothing really appealed to me. So I thought, yeah, I'm not going to do this. I just, you know, I love their stuff, and I'm not ordering right now. I did order because I couldn't get a coupon out of them. And if you start... Like, if you do it for the first time and you use a code, you can get 30% off. So, I went to Beverly's and we ordered for, her, yeah, all these really cool book stickers <clears throat> that I'd like to give out, but I can't give them out on that opening day. They're completely handling all that. But I'll have them as people start coming in and things calm down just to give out, you know, just a fun sticker. But I got maybe a few other things because it was 30% off. But I still have Tamu. I want to, you know, I, it's just, I already have stuff filmed. So, I'm going to play with that a little bit. I have lots of books to go through with y'all. I mean, just lots of good stuff to share with you. I just feel like I barely scratched the surface. So, yeah. But anyway, thank you guys for spending time with me. We're not quite an hour, but we're heading there. I feel better. As I talk to you, I feel more energetic. I feel um, not crazy because I've been like adrenaline and boom, like boom, boom. I feel just a little bit more... Um, my brain feels a little better and I feel more just even and calm, but not so tired like I like that. So, yeah, I'm really good working on that this week of not um, of really catching myself in the moment. But when you're in a situation that's so overwhelming, it, you know, and somebody I did talk to in, in, um, you know, in another department seeking guidance and um, I kind of got upset and he this he's like, okay, number one, remain calm. <laughs> you have a gun to your head, just remain calm. Sit at your desk, remain calm. Leave the building as often as you need to. Just keep a track of it and what was happening. This, this guy. So anyway, um, but anyway, he gave me some good advice. And that's all I wanted really was guidance, not to pursue anything. I just needed you know, some guidance from outside where I'm at. So I got it <clears throat> for now. We'll see. But it was very, it's like, remain calm. Isn't that like, I don't care what your profession is. If you're a hairdresser, if you work at, wherever you work, if you're an accountant, first thing is to remain calm. Yeah, wouldn't that be? And this is the thing about Pema. Pema will say, okay, so remember to be in the moment. And she goes, and that's so easy. <laughs> I mean, she understands that this people... People, um, you know, this is, she's dealt with, yeah, it's just a thing. It's a practice, y'all. It's a practice. And that's why I got to get out of my head that once I know something doesn't mean I have to be perfect or, you know, we all know I'm very hard on myself. I'm really working on letting that go, y'all. Maybe having someone else be hard on me has made me think, huh, how does this relate to me being hard on myself or, you know, really? It gave me some pause for thought, y'all. It really did. Um. Yeah, it's just good. I've just been checking in with myself so much. It's a good thing, like, to check in with yourself all the time. But, so, I am going to sit here and just not think. I'm just going to be. I'm going to observe all the cool stuff I have to put away. Stuff I still want to haul. Just have the fireplace on for a little bit. Probably coming towards the end of the weekend, you know, to do that, which is fine. Because, y'all, how much is that gas leak going to cost me? That's just thought of that. Okay, but I don't care because my house is here. My cat's okay. I'm okay. <clears throat> and money comes, money goes, and universe provides, God provides. So, all right, guys, can't wait to see your comments. 
again, forgive me. Um, and I will, you know, it's just, you know, I wonder if I could figure out how, to, if Surrey, I don't know how I could get Surrey. I, I can get Surrey to text and do that kind of stuff. I don't know if I could use Surrey to actually, I have to ask my friend, Michelle, she knows everything or my friend or Susan knows everything, but can I use Surrey to make comments? That would be awesome. Then I could save hand power. And I want to get my nails done. My friend promised me two years now to get help for my birthday. So I told her, I want to make a date. I want to get my nails done on you for my birthday. And then right before, I, you know, I really wasn't going to go to the grand opening, y'all. Um, I just thought it can be overwhelming. And um, I don't know, we'll see what changes. But I did buy a new, I did I bought a new shirt, which I can't wait to show you. It's like white and this big, bold pink flower with these green leaves. I need to get a pair of, I would like to get a pair of like that color pink pants to go with it, like heading more towards summer. Um, so I got to, you know, I'm going to allow myself to buy that. And um, I got to try it on with y'all and see what you, I'd like to get y'all's opinion, but if I keep it or not. So just in case I do want to be there, right? Just in case. I feel like that's, but I do think y'all since the pandemic, y'all, I'm going to be over one hour here. I find it overwhelming and I not, you know, not a lot in life truly overwhelms me, but I, it's a pandemic and all that's going on being in high energy things. Like, I don't know how I would do at a concert y'all, but like, it's going to be high energy. It's going to be chaotic, organized chaos, right? And then there's going to be so, I'm going to have a wave of love, which is wonderful. And I blessed and I've worked hard to have these relationships with people, but it's going to be like, where's Tracy? Hey, Tracy, where's Tracy? You know, oh my God, you know, and a lot of talking about the building and a lot of selfing. Some people see the value and why this is a good thing because not everyone's going to feel that y'all. But I can, I, the more I worked in the building, the more I loved it. And you know, it's hard to let go of old, but you know, it's really great. It really has grown on me and I'm really happy with it and proud actually to work there. So we'll see. But, um, but I do find that that kind of, that kind of energy, like even being in a really busy restaurant, you know, it's just different. And I do think it's the pandemic. Maybe it's my age, maybe it's grief, you know, but you just got to honor where you're at. Right. And so I never go in high energy places. I'm okay with that. But I have to think too about grounding myself and really work on, you know, I got to find a really good thing to watch and listen to about really grounding myself and keeping my energy contained. Just, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, guys, thank you so much. I can't wait to see your comments. Again, I'm going to work on catching up. <clears throat> and um, yeah, what a blessing you guys are to me. I thought about you so much these two weeks. Like, I really wanted to talk to you and I really couldn't. I w it would not. Yeah, it's not appropriate. of us have to be appropriate <laughs> so so that's what's going on and um so blessings love happy saint patrick's day i had my saint patrick's day shirt out yesterday i just was it was don't mess if i think clara you know didn't even enter my mind so so yeah all right guys and um yeah let's start talking about easter and um spring and let's get back on y'all decluttering and spring cleaning and one of my um, co-workers who I had worked with before, but she got a promotion and she's from Iran and we were talking and uh, it was just me and her in a room, yeah, marking out. And there, I don't know the name of the holly, but it's like a spring ritual holly, you know, spring celebration um, in Iran. And um, she has to clean every speck of her house, like a closet, like every single thing. And the woman's making like 30 dishes to have family over on Sunday. I did volunteer that on Monday. I would be happy to have some leftovers. So she's an amazing cook. And she makes foods I've never really been exposed to. So that's awesome too. But yeah. So, so let's get ready. Let's get the, I think spring starts next week, y'all. We got to get geared up, get ready. And y'all let me know, what do you do for the spring cleaning? Like, is it just nothing, you know, you're on it all the time or do you make a concerted effort? Like, okay, it's the garage time. It's closet times. I don't know. I find it so interesting. So y'all let me know. I'm leaving because it's 59 minutes and 14 seconds. I'll see you soon.